it's a fairly common misperception that once you go on Shark Tank, like you've made it. You know, everyone says, well, you get the exposure and it's great. And that's all true. But the truth is that that's when the work really starts. Like we had worked for three and a half years or whatever, just to get that shot to pitch the sharks. And what is up, my fellow side hustlers? This is your friend and host, Ryan Helms. I want to welcome you to the Hustle to Freedom podcast. I'm part of a small minority that are taking action because we just aren't satisfied with waking up, going to a nine to five job, then coming home only to repeat it again the next day and never make any real progress in life. We're here to create our own path, our own happiness, our own freedom, and we refuse to be just another cog in the machine. Because we have busy lives and limited resources, We can't just throw stuff against the wall and hope that something sticks. We have to play smart and move forward each day with consistent focus and deliberate effort while using only today's best tactics and most efficient tools. We aren't going to sit back and hope for a 3% raise each year. We are building additional income sources that will allow us to create the life we want. We call ourselves Freedom Chasers. And this podcast highlights the journeys of these everyday people who are creating extraordinary side hustles. Welcome to the Hustle to Freedom podcast. In this episode, we are chatting with Chris Healy, co-founder of The Long Hairs. The Long Hairs is a physical products brand and community that was featured on Shark Tank six months ago where they raised $100,000 from billionaire investor Mark Cuban. You'll hear all about their journey from coming up with the idea to the sacrifices they had to make to grow the brand and how it's led to this side hustle being featured on primetime TV and raising capital to turn it into a full-time business selling hair ties for guys. Let's not waste any more time and hop into this chat with Chris now. My name's Chris Healy. I'm one of two founders of The Long Hairs. We've been in business for almost four years now, but before the long hairs, there was short hair. (laughs) And I was actually a short hair lifer up until I was about 30 years old. I'm from Northern California. I went to college at Fresno State. I had an excellent experience there. After Fresno State, I got my first job out of college for about seven years. Gave me a great chance to travel all around the country and meet lots of people and develop a lot of mentors. And one of those mentors, he asked me what I was going to do after the job that I was in. And I wasn't sure. And he said, well, when I was your age, I did this trip around the world and it was one of the best things I ever did in my life. And you should think about doing that. So I said, all right, let's, uh, let's do a trip around the world. And I didn't know when it was going to be, but I was doing well in my job and I had started telling people, yeah, I'm going to do this trip around the world. As it turned out, it was uh, almost seven years later after the idea was conceived. And this whole time I had been kind of the classic high and tight, short hair, all business, clean cut businessman. But I left my job. I left my home. I packed up all my things into a small backpack and I left the United States and I did a trip around the world for 11 months. I went to six continents, 28 countries, all on my own. And of course, it was a remarkable, life-changing, life-shaping experience. But the key was that uh, I didn't have any formal engagements or business meetings. So I just started letting my hair grow out. It really wasn't intentional. I just you know, didn't have any reason to cut it. And so by the time I got back, almost a year later, my hair was considerably longer. It wasn't super long, but it was longer than I'd ever had it. And I got back and wasn't sure I was going to end up. But one of my best buds from the fraternity back in college, his name is Lindsey Bartow. He said that he was living in San Diego at the time. And he said, hey, man, I, I got a room that you could move into and 
I'm starting up this small business. It's a marketing agency and you can get involved with that and come on down to San Diego. So that's where I ended up. And pretty soon thereafter, I got involved with this business. It was called Round Two Creative Group. It was a small web shop and marketing agency. Truthfully, we didn't really know exactly what it was at the time, but we were just <laughs> making websites for people and you know, hustling and figuring it out. Neither one of us had any agent agency experience, but we really dove in and we started learning the trade. And he was trained in school in digital marketing, web development, interactive media. So he had a lot of the technical skills and I'd done a fair bit of writing and sales and just general business stuff in my first job. And so we were off, man, and we were making $500 websites and we thought we were going to make a million bucks. That's a lot of websites. That's a lot of websites. We figured that out pretty quick. <laughs> and so we were kind of stumbling along, figuring out what the hell we were doing. And even though, so we started learning and, and making more money, but we always knew that round two, the marketing agency was more of a means to an end. We knew that we wanted to come up with our own thing and we were kind of just trying to survive in the meantime and learn and grow and figure it out. Well, my partner, Lindsay, he had been growing his hair out as well. And you know, things were going well with the business, but one day we were driving home from a client meeting and it had gone well and all, but we'd been trying out some different ideas and kind of testing them out and feeling them out and nothing had really stuck yet. So we didn't have our thing yet, but we knew we wanted to find something. And one day driving home, we were just rapping as usual, and suddenly the heavens opened, and a divine inspiration came into the car, and we knew it. It's hair ties for guys. This is it. Yes, we got to do it. And we started, we were cracking up, we were laughing, and we loved the idea. It was funny, it was punchy, it was sticky, you could immediately tell what it was, and like, dude, this is it. Hair ties for guys. So and it rhymes exactly. It, it's it's got a little bounce, got a little kick to it, and uh, it's memorable. And literally that night, I had gone out, and I was hanging with a gal, drinking a beer, and just kind of off the top of my head, I ripped off this script. It wasn't a script at the time. I just started saying, "Have you ever asked a man for a hair tie?" No. You know why? Because it wasn't cool. Until now, now you could get hair ties for guys. And guess what? Now it is cool. And we we're so excited that that night literally went home. I'd written this on a cocktail napkin. And <laughs> later on, I got home and wrote out this full script. And long story short, I pitched it to my business partner. And he loved it. And all of our buddies loved it. And within about 10 days, we had a full production video commercial for an imaginary product. And I mean, it was ready to go and we were about to hit publish. We're like, man, we're going to make a million bucks. But then it was, wait a second, we don't have any hair ties <laughs> for guys or for anyone. Yeah. Or a website or a brand or a business model or anything. All we have is an idea and a funny commercial. And we realized we had to take a few steps back. And that's where we came up with the long hair. We realized it was more than just a piece of elastic. Mm -hmm. It was about guys with long hair and why we need hair ties for guys because everything out there for long hair whether it's products or content or videos or training or how to is all by and large for women and so that's when we really realized that okay this is a brand this is a community it's a it's a place to go for just regular guys who have grown their hair out and they're trying to figure out what the hell to do with it so at that point, you know, several months later, putting a little more work and energy and thought into it, we started creating content. And content really is the story of our brand. So when we first So were you creating it, content before you had even uh so you you made the video and then you took several steps back and now you're saying you were creating content. Did you make actual product in between that or did you guys just you went straight into just making content to try to build the brand? Yep, we'd been learning about content. We'd been doing it for our clients. We'd been learning how to do it. And so we, we were a long ways out from a product. We didn't know where the hell to start. Like, how do you get hair ties? I don't know. 
we went to the fabric store, Joann's, and we started just buying our own elastic and making our own hair ties. But we didn't have a product yet that we could sell. But we knew that this community aspect was going to be the most important part. So we started creating content before we had any product whatsoever. And we will launch this website. It was in December of 2014. We had a little kickoff party. It was called Long Manes and Candy Canes. <laughs> and uh, some of our first few blog posts were, uh, you know, simple stuff like six tricks for guys with long hair and long hair at high speed and how to power through the awkward stage. And we launched the website with three blog posts and we made a commitment to start creating content once a week. And since that time, December of 2014, we have published a, an original blog post every single week. So we're getting on towards somewhere close to 200 weeks at this point, and we've never missed. Yeah, I was actually, I was looking at your website before this, and that was actually one of the things that I noticed was it was like clockwork. It was like, boom, 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 because I was expecting this to see like some, some big gaps in there, like, oh, they post like once a month, but it was like every week, every week. Every week, man, we made a commitment to consistency, and at first, you know, hardly anyone was reading, like almost no one, it was both of our moms, right? And <laughs> my partner's girlfriend at the time, fiance at the time, and maybe a few friends and stuff, but we were like, no, we're gonna keep doing this. And so we kept publishing and publishing and we started getting a little bit of traffic and building a little bit of an audience, started getting a few more folks following us on social media, commenting on the blog posts, and we just kept going, man. And over time, we were working on it. And so you tend to attract things to you, you know, the universe delivers. And we had gone, we'd been going to networking events and meetups and creative mixers and things. And we finally made a connection. Of course, we're always telling people about the long hairs. And we met a guy who had long hair, I just handed him a long hairs referral card at a at a creative mixer event. And he had relationships with manufacturing and experience. And he said, I can help you guys make these hair ties. And we obviously we were super stoked, but it still took probably nine more months from that point. So it was, it was about a year later, it was December of 2015 at long last after, you know, we didn't make a dollar. We had not, you know, all we were doing was content. And meanwhile, our primary business was the marketing agency which required a lot of energy and time and focus and learning and failing and trying again and making enough money to survive. So running this full-time marketing agency over that year, it was, it was a, it was a major challenge to just do a blog post every week. But finally in December of 2015, we launched the fabled hair ties for guys and we were off and running. And since we built a small following and audience by that time, it wasn't just completely flat. You know, it wasn't like it was gangbusters right off the bat, but we made sales right off the bat. And pretty much since then, we've made at least one sale. For a while, we were just doing like one or two or three or five sales a day. Man, and one day we got like 10 sales. We thought that was just the biggest, you know, greatest thing in, in history. Uh, so it was, it, it was a small start. It was a modest and humble start. How did you guys get those first customers? Did you do anything specific? Was it because you had spent a year or plus previously building, putting out this content and starting to build this community? Did that help out in that beginning stages? It was the only reason we made sales. We had some diehard followers. We had some casual followers. Like I said, we had a few people commenting on our blog posts and paying attention and tuning in and all that stuff. And so uh, one, of the, one of the blog posts that we published was the comprehensive review of hair ties. And we went out and bought every single type of brand of hair ties that we could find. And we did a, a thorough in-depth review, in -depth review on all of them and came to the conclusion that, man, all the hair ties out there suck. And we got to come up with something better. And so we'd established ourselves as, uh, I don't want to say quite experts, but we demonstrated that we knew about something about hair ties. And so by the time we launched them, we had at least enough of an audience 
to, to make some sales right off the bat. And I mean, cause when I just think about it, like when I think about the number of guys that have long hair and then the number of guys that want to buy hair ties or that will buy hair ties that will pull out their credit card in, in my head, it seems small. It seems like a small number. Like what, what was your, what was your guys thoughts in the beginning on like, this could actually be a business. This could be what we do one day full time. Like where, where was your mindset at? I could tell you without a doubt that the vision was crystal clear and we believed that this would be a business from, from the very beginning, from the day that idea came in the car ride, we believed that we would be able to sell hair ties for guys and that it would someday become a full-time business. And you're right. The percentage of men who have long hair is relatively small, you know, at most, I mean, probably 10% would be an overstatement. Maybe 5% is what we could say, depending on where, where you are. Yeah. But there's a lot of people. There's 7 billion people in the world and there's 330 something million in the U S. So even if only 5% of those have long hair, that's still millions of men with long hair. And then maybe only 1% of those guys are going to actually buy hair ties. Well, that's still a, a sizable market, but more importantly, it's a market that's going to pay attention to us because there's nothing else out there for them. So you hear the adage, you know, there's money in the niches or however it goes, something along those the lines. The riches are in the niches. The riches in the niches. Exactly. Thank you. Uh, so even though we thought it was a relatively small market, we, we were never worried about it. We always believed from day one that we could build this into a full-time business. Hmm. Yeah. So how long, how long before you guys got that first sale? Would you say it was like December of 2015? Is that what you said? Yeah. Yep. How long after that did you guys drop the agency and focus on this full time? So it was at the end of 2016 and we were still only doing, you know, at best like 1200 bucks a month, 1500 bucks, maybe one month we did like $2,000 and that was a lot for us but that's not enough to sustain two guys and their families. Especially so, in California. Yeah. Especially in California and San Diego. And, but at the same time, we were putting so much energy into the agency and we saw how much energy it was going to take to continue building this audience and stick with the content and make our website better and improve our products and do all the things that it was going to take that we, we knew we had to make a change. And we were full-time agency and a side hustle with the long hairs. And at the time we had a studio in downtown San Diego in a neighborhood called little Italy, really nice little modest studio, but it still wasn't cheap. And we said, look, if we're going to make this happen, we've got to go all in. We've got to be able to put the real energy into this business that it's going to require. And we knew we had to make a sacrifice. So we packed up our studio, we moved out, we cut down on all of our costs and we didn't close down the agency, but we stopped going out and getting orders, uh, sales. We stopped pursuing, we kept the clients that we had while effectively going full time and we still weren't making enough money to survive, but we just made a conscious decision. Like we got to do this, man. We got to give this everything we got. And so in January of 2017 is when we went more or less part-time, although we were full-time, although we were still, you might say we were half-time, half, -time, half uh, agency and half long hairs. And then during the year 2017, over the course of that year, it really wasn't until the end of 2017 that we started making enough uh, monthly to sustain ourselves. Uh, and even today, here in uh, middle of 2018, we do still have two or three clients that we're just doing some monthly work for on their website and their social media and some of their things. And they're clients who we really like working with and awesome businesses. So we do still have a very small slice of our energy that's going into the marketing agency. But really at about the end of 2017 was, uh, okay, this is for real now. And uh, of course, things played out from that point. But that's about 
kind of how it all went down. And now here in 2018, I mean, we're, we're, we're full time. There's, there's no doubt about it. Yeah. So going back to the guy that you met that you said, or said could help you out with the product, like how, how did that go down? It sounded like a long time between when it got brought up to when it came to fruition. So what was the manufacturing setup like? Is it domestic? Is it overseas? How's that set up? It, it is overseas. And man, what a journey. Uh, just from the time that we got our first samples, and this was several months until we had our designs that we liked and we were in contact through this broker with overseas manufacturing and we sent them the designs and said, here, this is what we want. And we finally got this first round of samples and it came in and we were so freaking excited and we opened up the box and we ripped everything open and we saw our designs on there and our packaging, but we're like, wait, these are still women's hair ties. And by women's hair ties, I just mean like stuff that you'd already seen that is already out there. These were the kind of nylon type material that are tied with a, t a little knot at the end uh, that you can buy at most stores with our designs printed on them. And while it said hair ties for guys on the product, it was like, this is not, this is not it. And so we had to go back to the drawing board and we had to try a different kind of elastic and then we got something that we loved and we're like, dude, this is great. But then they printed our designs on them and it melted the damn elastic because they used a heat transfer. And so that didn't work either. We're like shit, man. So we went through four or five rounds of product development. And when the samples are coming from overseas, you know, it's at least a month or two months before you get stuff and trying to get it better each time around. So it was probably five rounds of samples and, Till we finally got some in our hands and we said yes this is what we are going for and that was what brought us up to that december of 2015 launch and it was still a relatively rudimentary product we've made several product improvements and upgrades with the different versions since then but it was good enough to 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 start selling them they were they were quality hair ties they had our designs they look good they feel good they perform well and we went with it but gosh, the, just the whole process, it was, it was discouraging at times because like, man, are we ever get, it seems like the simplest product imaginable, imaginable, this little loop of elastic. And yet the amount of energy and time that went into getting it right, uh, it was more than we probably would have even ever imagined. Yeah. Yeah, I, I know like what having had the journal uh, that I launched on Kickstarter manufactured overseas as well. and you know, you have to be so specific about every, because they, they will take what you say to like, to the period, right? If, if you say do this, you better damn sure mean do that because that's how it's going to be when you get it. Uh, yeah. So it, it can definitely be a challenge. And, you know, one of the things that I ran into was uh, like manufacturers trying to skimp on the material. So like using like cheaper materials or not the material I asked for, or sometimes I would have them send me uh, and actually have it. People listening won't be able to see it, but I actually have it right here. All the different sample fabrics from uh, cover materials from the different manufacturers. And like they would send you the, I would ask for just samples of the materials and then I would get actual physical sample, like you said, a month later because I had to produce it, ship it, blah, blah, blah. And it wouldn't be the same materials. And I'm like, wait, paper would be different, blah, blah, blah. So yeah, it can be a challenge. Yeah, it certainly was. And I say discouraging, but still, like we never faltered in our belief. We, we still believed even through all the challenges that we're going to make this thing happen and thank goodness we had a partner with those connections and we were able to make it that far. I mean, again, it took freaking seemed like forever, but we got what we wanted. And again, there still have been product improvements. We're coming out with a big product improvement later on this year that hopefully will be the, the superior men's hair tie in the, in the, in the world, which we have no doubt of, but yeah, the product development turned out to be more than we really thought it was going to be but we just stuck with it, man. And we kept driving forward and we've made it this far. Cool. How many SKUs did you guys launch with? We launched with six different designs. We also had gotten some hats uh, just before that. 
uh, some long hairs hats, which we, you know, we're thinking, oh, well, if we sell all of them in one day when we launch, you know, we'll make a couple thousand. It's not like that. It is not like that. We sold like two hats when we first launched it. Uh, but to answer your question, yeah, we had six designs, the same hair tie, but just with different designs. And then, so we're, we're going kind of chronologically through your guys' progression and product development there. And we got up to the, you were mentioning the end of 2017, something happened that the uh, beginning of uh, this year, 2018, that was probably pretty impactful for, for you guys and your business. Can you share what that was? Yeah, absolutely. And again, this started way back at the beginning also, but it really came to fruition in January of 2018. And that was our appearance on the television show Shark Tank. And that had started back in April of 17. We went to an open casting call in Southern California. And we have that story pretty well documented on our blog. For anyone who's interested, you can find most of our uh, content that we created surrounding Shark Tank. Uh, but that was a whole long process from April. Uh, we, we made it through the first round of the cuts and then another round and on and on. Uh, but September of 17 is when we actually filmed and we had our chance to pitch to the Starks at the, at the studio. And then from September, we didn't actually air on television until January. So yeah, it was a long process. Sit, yeah. We had to sit for four months knowing we knew the outcome of course, but we couldn't, we were under not NDAs and all. So we couldn't announce it, uh, what the outcome was, but you know, now that it's all out there, yes, we did get a deal on Shark Tank. And that really obviously was a turning point like it is for most businesses. Uh, but that was just an extraordinary experience. Uh, the whole, all the casting and the cuts and everything leading up to the filming was one thing, but it still wasn't public knowledge, you know, no one knew. And then when we aired in January, we went from very few people. Know, yeah, we built a, a, a reasonable, modest size following and audience, and we were selling and everything. But January, we aired, and it, it definitely gave us a huge boost in exposure, in sales, and it kind of launched us into the next stage of our business's development. Yeah, my next it's, question was going to be, like, how has – like besides the the immediate sales, right? Because you're obviously going to get some type of spike from the exposure. Like, but in in what other ways has it impacted your business? Uh, and I don't remember if you said it or not, but it was Mark Cuban that you guys partnered up with. Um, what other ways has your business changed since uh, pre Shark Tank to post Shark Tank in in partnering with him and his team? Yeah, great question. So it's a fairly common misperception that once you go on Shark Tank, like you've made it, you know, everyone says, well, you get the exposure and it's great. And that's all true. But the truth is that things really start. And that's when the work really starts. Like we had worked for three and a half years or whatever, just to get that shot to pitch the sharks. And just going back a little bit, you know, just like we believed in the idea from day one, whenever the, the idea was conceived of going on Shark Tank, which was pretty early on also, even before we had the hair ties or anything. <laughs> we absolutely believed that we were gonna get on that show and that we were gonna get a deal. And there was just no faltering in that belief. And I think that confidence mixed with a, a very humble approach at the same time, uh, really paved the way for us to get a deal and so, yes, it's huge exposure, massive increase in sales, literally overnight in that week of, but, and we rode that wave for a solid two months, but the truth is it, you know, it dies out and it levels out a little bit. And so we needed to figure out, all right, what is it going to take for us to really take this business for the long run? And we're in this for the long game. Uh, so the sales absolutely increased dramatically, our reach, our exposure, our following, our audience, all those things, uh, we saw a dramatic increase. It actually also took us almost six months before we finally were able to consummate the deal with our investment partner. Uh, that was a challenge in and of itself. 
but we ultimately were able to do that and we secured the investment funds and we've been using those funds to execute on our plan, mostly marketing, inventory, sales, uh, bringing on some help. We have one full-time employee, one part-time employee, and then a handful of contractors who help us in different areas from email and advertising and analytics and things like that. So honestly, the biggest change is that now the responsibility is far greater than it ever was before. Uh, and our, our partner has been Mark Cuban and Mark Cuban companies and his team have been excellent to work with. It's been a fantastic experience. They've been very responsive, very helpful. Uh, they connect, we have frequent communication. Uh, they connect us with folks, whether it's manufacturing or uh, advertising or relationships or connecting us with other companies, uh, answering questions, providing guidance when we ask questions. Uh, no one is telling us what to do or how to do it. Uh, it's more of a responsive type relationship. So it still is all on us. But yeah, the biggest difference is that, well, th there really isn't a difference in our minds, honestly. We have always believed that we're taking this thing to the ends of the earth, but now that's more of a realistic responsibility that's, that, that we're shouldered with which we welcome, but it's, it's, it's pressed the envelope. It's pushed us to going from a small two man side hustle to a full blown enterprise business. And we've got to look ahead one year, two years, five years, 10 years, and just recognizing like what it's going to take to really make business is hard, man, as you know, and you've talked to many entrepreneurs and small businesses, it is damn hard to get one person to pull out their credit card and buy something from you. And then if they buy it and it sucks, they're not going to buy again. So you really are not helping yourself out. And then they're going to tell all their friends that it sucks and they're not going to buy either. <laughs> exactly. So it is damn hard to run a successful business. And I can't say we even have that figured out yet, although we're you know a lot further along in the journey than we were before. That's pretty much all I could say. But, uh, you know, we're, we're extremely grateful. We're extremely fortunate to have had the opportunity and that unrelenting belief in ourselves and confidence mixed with the humility and a humble approach have really led the way for us to this point. No, that's awesome. Do you think, and, and maybe we're not far enough along uh, post-investment to, to answer this, but do you think the biggest value is is the money or the team and relationships that come with uh, the investment from Mark Cuban? It's 100% our partnership. And while, and that's knowing how big the exposure was, it was huge. All, all of a sudden overnight, 8 million people know about you that didn't know about you before. And so that's huge exposure, huge sales increase, all of those things. And even as valuable as those things are, we see our long-term relationship as far outweighing the exposure in terms of value for us because we just have a chance. All we got is a chance to continue building a reputation for our guys and continue sending our weekly updates and having communication and doing what we say we're going to do and fulfilling our promises and delivering on what we set out to do. And we have a, a valuable partnership where we have a chance to be the guys who are dependable. And over time, it's been, what, seven months now? So let's make that two years, and let's make that five years, and then let's make that 10 years. We have a chance to prove ourselves as the reliable, the dependable, the guys that you could count on, the guys who know what they're doing. And if you can establish a reputation like that with a, a hugely successful businessman and his team, then the long-term opportunity that comes out of that is far more valuable really than, than anything else. And we didn't necessarily know that going into it. We, you know, drank a little bit of the Kool-Aid, like the, ah, wait, whatever, even if we don't get a deal. Yeah, it still would have been great and everything, but there's no doubt in our minds that, the relationship and the partnership that we're in 
is the most important thing that has come out of the Shark Tank experience. Yeah, I was at a, a little meetup here in Atlanta, probably 30 or 40 people. And one of the guys here in Atlanta, uh, his name's George, he was on Shark Tank as well. His product was called the Wind Pouch. And uh, he partnered with Cuban as well. And that was exactly what he said, that it was cool. Yeah, the money was great, but it was the relationships and, and the connections developed through that partnership that ultimately um, over the past year or two since he's been on there have been great. And I actually think he exited his company that, uh, that he was on there with. So I think it's done well for him. Yeah, no doubt. Cool, and man. again, we're just, we got a chance is what we got. That's what we've earned ourselves, a chance to have a, a great business partner, the advice, the guidance, the resources, that's what we got. And we intend to do everything we, we, we can to, to make that worth it. How are you guys growing the community? So I looked on, on YouTube before coming on here and you guys had like a little over 22,000 subscribers on YouTube, which is nothing to uh, shake a stick at. And you didn't have a ton of videos on there. There's not a ton unless I didn't scroll down far enough or something. How, have you, how are you guys growing these, these different audiences? Obviously I know you are putting out content cause you've put out a blog post every week for the past three years or however long it's been, but what, what's been working well for you? So yeah, we don't have a huge library, although we do have a little over 60 videos now. And YouTube has been an excellent channel for us. And that's because, well, we know from the analytics that people are searching, guys are searching for how to brush my hair, how to tie my hair. Our number one video, I think has 350,000 views or something. And it was one of our first videos. And it's simply how to tie your hair for men. Uh, another one of the blog posts, when you set out to create content, you always think that every blog post is going to be quality, but you don't necessarily know which ones are going to hit and which one is going to be a home run and which ones are going to be a grand slam. So for anyone listening, go out and Google awkward stage hair. And you would not believe how many guys are searching for the keywords awkward stage hair. And that tells me that there's a lot of guys who want to grow their hair out but who are getting derailed when they're in that awkward stage. You know, before uh, it's long enough to be long and to tie up, but it's, you've skipped a few haircuts and you're looking raggedy and uh, it's, it's all over the place and people start telling you to cut your hair and everything. I had so, that with the beard as well. Yeah, 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 yeah. very <laughs> similar with the beards. Uh, absolutely similar uh, situation. So it really has been just the unrelenting content that has allowed us to establish our audience. YouTube definitely has been excellent, but I don't think we could even have done what we've done up to this point with just YouTube. It's been a mix of YouTube videos, uh, written content, photography, uh, podcast, uh, all the stuff that we put out, our, our social media has come a long way over the past couple of years. We have a great guy who runs our social media and does all, our, all of our posting for, I mean, we still have to create the content, but uh, we've gotten a lot more traction with social media. So it's just been an unrelenting commitment to creating content. Some of those blog posts only end up getting, you know, a smaller viewership or readership, but we never, we didn't even know what the hell we were doing when we wrote that blog post, uh, uh, the uncomfortable truth about awkward stage hair. And that blog post brings us a significant amount of our traffic every month to our website. And that is a chance, that's an opportunity for us to help these guys get through the awkward stage. Powered through, baby, with courage and commitment. You can make it. We're going to be there on the other side. And when you do get there, you're going to need to tie your hair up. Maybe not all the time, but certainly when you're eating spaghetti. So... <laughs> We got the hair ties for you, baby, and you're going to love them, and you don't have to go shopping in the women's hair care aisle. You can find them right here at the longhairs.us, and you're going to love them. So that right there just establishes a long-term relationship. It establishes trust and uh, authority about you know long hair and, and, and the brand and all those things. So uh, really, there's just there's no question that, uh, again, I go back to the story of our brand is content 
original content and, and showing up every single week. And that has been the path to growing our audience. Yep. Yeah. And I'm consistency is everything, man. I, I try, I don't care if it's only one little thing that I can do that day. I try to do something every single day to keep pushing that ball forward a little bit every single day. It's awesome when I can push it really far, but I at least want to push it a little bit every single day. Just a touch, just a touch, something. Yep. And we, had, we used to have this little note card in our studio before we moved out that said, uh, what did I do today to make a million dollars? And we still haven't made a million dollars, so uh, we're not there yet by any means. And you know what? Even when we do make a million dollars someday, we're still not going to be there. Because as your revenue increases, so do your expenses and your liabilities and your responsibilities and all those things. Uh, so you got it, man. And for anyone listening who wants to start their own side hustle or their own business, consistency is the path. There's just, there's, there's no way around it. There's no overnight success. There's no seven minute abs. There's no quick fix. Like you got to be willing to play the long game and we're in it. We are playing the long game. No pun intended. Yeah, no, I'm, I couldn't agree more, man. I'm, I'm all about the long game and putting in the work and build especially when you're building a brand, right? You've got it. It's, it's all about the long game because it takes time to build trust, to build your audience. Like none of that. You can, you, you can buy followers on Instagram. Sure. But those people aren't going to buy anything from you. Like it takes oh. time to build an, an organic audience that knows you, that trusts you, that relates to you. Like all that takes so much time because it just doesn't happen. I mean, it doesn't happen overnight. You just, you can't fabricate it. Nope. And we use the analogy often about growing your hair. A lot of people want to have long hair or even just maybe wonder what would it be like if I had long hair? Well, you're not going to find out for about a year and a half to two years before you can start tying it up. We also use fitness as an analogy. You want to have rock hard abs or you want to be jacked or whatever, like that's a commitment. You got to be in the gym or exercising or doing fitness every day. You cannot get it overnight. You cannot buy it. You cannot inherit it. You cannot steal it. It only comes through dedication and hard work and commitment. And the, the very same thing goes for building a business and, and growing your audience. Yep. Yeah. Couldn't agree more, man. So what are you guys using as far as software and, and things like that to run the business? Is it, it looks like it, possibly it could have been Shopify. I'm not sure. Was it Shopify? Yep. So we started on WordPress for a long time and we were using WooCommerce for our e-commerce. And just earlier this, uh, late last year, we switched over to Shopify. Our blog is still on WordPress. And that was kind of a, we weren't sure what we were going to do. You know, we've been building our blog. We've got all our traffic over here on WordPress, but for the e-commerce functionality, Shopify is really the gold standard. So long story short, we use both now. We no longer use WordPress for our e-commerce. That is where our blog lives. But thanks to our stellar development team, if you're just on our website, surfing around between content and products, you really aren't going to notice that you're on two different websites unless you're looking at the URL and you can see blog.thelonghairs.us versus thelonghairs.us. So we're using both of those. And then there's all sorts of different software that we use for our opt-ins, for our automated email systems, for our advertising. And, you know, there's a million tools out there. It kind of comes back to the same thing. And I've always kind of said this that you can have all the tools in the world but the tools are not what is going to get you there they they can help you but you ultimately it's no substitute for just putting the work in and putting the time in and even the best tools out there if you don't commit to them if you don't use them if you don't leverage them and use them how they're intended to be used then it's 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 just kind of like having a fancy flashy new thing uh, that's not really doing that much for you. So we've gone through a lot of different softwares and a lot of different things. We're pretty happy with the stuff that we have right now. Shopify is excellent. WordPress is great for the blog itself. We use Optin Monster 
for our opt-ins. That's been a great software. We use Klaviyo. We did use MailChimp for a long time. We switched earlier this year over to Klaviyo for our email service provider. Uh, of course, we do a lot with Facebook and Instagram and the other social media platforms. So that's a handful of the different softwares that we that we have used and that we're using now. How do you like Klaviyo? I know a lot of people probably haven't heard of it, but it's really big in the e-commerce space. Um, so how's it how's it been performing for you guys? It's huge. We is a huge upgrade for us. Mailchimp was very good for a long time, but it got to a point, like you said, from the e-commerce standpoint, with your transactional based emails and your uh, your automations, your flows, all of those things. Klaviyo has been an excellent tool. We also have a really solid team who's working for us and managing our Clavia. We did everything ourselves in MailChimp. Like we just did it and we learned it and we figured it out. Uh, when we switched over to Clavio, we hired an agency. Uh, might as well just uh, share their name. They're called Healthy Media, H-E-A-L-T-H-I-E, -E, Healthy Media. And they've been managing our Clavio. And it's been a growth and learning and figuring it out just like everything else is, but they've done a fantastic job for us. And we're very happy with Clavio and the performance to this point. Cool. What do you think, what's the biggest benefit over MailChimp versus Clavio? Like how, how does it impact your guys' business the most? Is it kind of, is it automation? Is it the follow-up on like, what is it? Part of it is the segmentation ability. So we can segment our email list in many different and oftentimes robust ways that we maybe weren't able to do with MailChimp or maybe we just didn't learn how to do it in MailChimp. I'm not going to you know, shut them down. They, they do a good job in a lot of ways, but uh, definitely the segmentation, the automation, the e-commerce transactional based emails, uh, the way that our email list is organized. Um, the way that the automation and the flows are organized and how you put them together with the logic and so forth, all of those things are very intuitive and you can kind of see them built out in the interface. So yeah, those are a few of the ways that have really helped us. Cool, man. Uh, last two questions here, then we can wrap up. Uh, next question is, where do you guys see yourself one year from now? That's a great question, man. I don't know that anyone has ever asked that question. A huge part of our business strategy is expanding our product line. Right now we're working on shampoo and conditioner, brushes, combs. We envision having a full line of products for men with long hair. And just like hair ties for guys, the product development is a long journey, man. And it's tough and there's a lot that goes into it. And you got to put time and effort and money and resources into developing your products. So a year from now, we would love to have those four products online and available for our customers. Uh, you know, beyond that, uh, continuously growing our audience and our user base. Thankfully, well, it's not really thankfully, we have this content. We have four years of content that we've created. So we are not limited to just advertising our product and buy our stuff and blah, blah, and like intrusive, annoying ads and things like we can advertise to content and we can get our content out there in new and creative ways. And that is attractive to people versus just your more classic uh, straight product advertising so a year from now, I see another 52 weeks worth of content being published. I see new products uh, introduced and, of course, continuing to refine those products and make them better and develop them further. Uh, I see a larger user base. Uh, I see our presence expanded on Amazon and other potentially other third-party platforms similar to that. And just one year further down the path that we are on and continuing to do what we're doing. And beyond that, who knows, there's going to be other stuff too that we're not even thinking about, but uh, those are definitely some of the Nissan keys to victory, if you will. <laughs> no, the, the path to greatness. It seems like uh, 
it, it's only time that's the only determinant because you guys are obviously putting in the work and the consistency. Um, so you said it a few times in this episode, but where can people find out more about you guys and uh, and check out the hair ties for guys? Yeah, definitely. Great question. Appreciate you giving us a shot to uh, pitch some of our uh, some places where you could find us. So certainly our website is the longhairs.us. Uh, we're on Instagram and Facebook as the longhairs on Twitter. We are at yo longhairs. And those are really the best places to find us. Certainly uh, give us a follow on Instagram and just check out the site, man. We've really been working on this website for a long time and uh, we're very proud of what we've accomplished so far and all the original content that we published, knowing that there's still a long road ahead and there's a lot of work ahead, but uh, just give it, give it, give a shot. We got, Oh, our YouTube channel certainly uh, would be a great place to go and visit also the long hairs and uh, check out some of our videos, check out some of our original content, or you could just go and Google awkward stage hair and you will <laughs> easily find us there. Did you say you uh, had a podcast as well? Yeah, we do. It's called Let It Ride, the Long Hairs podcast, Let It Ride. That's on all of the uh, podcast apps as well as on SoundCloud. And if you don't mind, I could pitch another uh, really the biggest thing that we have going on, and I can't believe I neglected to mention this when you asked about one year from now. So next year, we will attempt to break the Guinness World Record for the largest hair donation in the history of mankind. It will be called the Great Cut, where the goal is 2,000 men, women, and children to congregate here in San Diego under mostly sunny skies and with our charity partners at Children With Hair Loss, we will all cut our hair to donate to children who cannot grow their own hair. It's gonna be a hair whipping, karate kicking, record breaking charity event, after which every single man in the world will have a valid and selfless reason to grow his hair out. Instead of having to say, well, I just wanted to try it out or see what it looks like, that's a weak response, man. And everyone's like, well, you should cut it. And it looks terrible and cut your hair. Well, I'm growing it out to donate it to a kid who has alopecia or who's going through cancer treatment or has been a burned victim and can't grow their own hair. And that gives every man a rock solid response for the naysayers. But more importantly, you know, children with hair loss, they're the only organization of their kind that provide real hair replacements to children and young adults suffering from medically related hair loss, 100% free of charge. They don't charge the, the families or the children or their families. They provide ongoing support on how to take care of your wig and how to maintain it. And they'll give you up to one new wig every year up until the kid turns 21. And they have been just fantastic partners for us. In fact, we donate $1 for every sale to children with hair loss. We've donated over $10,000 to charity to date. And the Great Cut, as big as Shark Tank was for us, I see the Great Cut as being far bigger, far more important, having far wider reach and a greater impact on making the world a better place than anything else we've ever done. And frankly, it's the biggest thing that my partner Lindsay and I have ever attempted in our lives. And a year from now, that will be done, baby. So uh, hopefully we'll have the Guinness World Record uh, under our belts and we'll be looking ahead to the next great cut. So if you're thinking about growing your hair out and if you're not going to have it, it won't be long enough by next. Oh, it's uh, March 16th, 2019, 3 16, 19. And if you're growing your hair out now or you want to start growing it out, well, the minimum donation is eight inches. So if you don't have eight, eight inches by next March, you'll be granted a waiver of honor by the long hairs and you could get a pass for this time around, but uh, rest assured, we're gonna do it again. And this great cut is gonna get some wheels and you know, hopefully we can really make a substantial change and an impact in the lives of children and their families you know, for, for decades to come. Yeah, that's huge, man. Not only is it, is it going to help so many people? But I mean, you'll get it just your business will get a ton of uh, very positive exposure. And it'll really highlight 
you know, I mean, obviously it'll highlight your brand, but it'll, it'll highlight you guys as individuals. And, you know, again, that community thing, right. Knowing you, trusting you, this, this all goes back to that. So I think, man, it's going to be a bit, it's going to be amazing to be a part of that uh, with you guys kind of leading the charge there. I know you've got a, a long road ahead of you to kind of organize that and get it all going. Yeah, there's no doubt. And if you want to learn more about that, you can visit thegreatcut.us. And we have a nice page built out for that. It's continuing to build out, but there's plenty of great information there right now. And I really firmly believe that a successful business is one that is able to sustain and support its owners and employees and create a life for the folks who are working on it, but also make the world a better place in whatever way or shape or fashion that may be. But you got to have something that matters beyond just money. And a, a successful business is one that can do all of those things and also make the world a better place. And that gives us all the inspiration that we need and a sense of purpose that wouldn't necessarily be there if it was just to make profit. And we have a purpose, we have a mission, we have a desire and we have enthusiasm unknown to mankind. <laughs> Love it, man. It. Love it. Hey, well, I appreciate you uh, spending your Thursday afternoon. I'm sure there's a ton of other things you could be doing. So thanks a lot for hanging around, talking with me, sharing your story with the audience. It was great chatting with you. Absolutely, man. Glad to do it. Uh, appreciate the invite to be on the show and uh, can't wait to hear it when it publishes. And thanks for having us, man. It was great chatting. Yep. Talk soon. All right. Have a good one. I hope you enjoyed that episode with Chris from The Long Hairs. This is a perfect example of something that on the surface may not seem like a money-making idea, but once you mix consistency, passion, and community, you have a winning formula. Be sure to check out thelonghairs.us and equally important, check out their upcoming charity, thegreatcut.us. So, Freedom Chasers, if you like these episodes, be sure to go rate and review the podcast in iTunes or in the Apple Podcast app. It would mean a ton to me. Until next time, keep hustling.